Being in a hotel makes it worse, less predictable. Anyone could walk in. Being scared makes me wet. No one knows that better than Dar. I know I don't have to do this, but I also know I will. The wetness soaking through my panties and glazing my inner thighs is evidence of how aroused I am despite my nerves. Looking at my watch, I see I only have five minutes to wait. With each minute, my anxiety escalates, and I'm not even restrained yet. I swallow hard against the lump in my throat and force myself to tear my eyes away from my watch. Whatever buzz I had from the drink is gone. Adrenaline flows through my body as I finally settle the blindfold over my eyes, making sure the handcuffs will be easy to reach once my sight is gone. The only noise in the room, the ratcheting sound of the cuffs tightening, comp competes with the sound of rushing blood in my head. I don't wait long. Moments later, I hear a card slide into the door and the handle turns. Hello, pet, he says simply. I reply in the same simple fashion, so nervous and agitated that even saying two words is a struggle. I listen hard to determine if there is anyone else in the room with him, but the thick carpet successfully muffles any sound. I jump when I feel his hand brush my cheek. Nervous pet, he queries. Yes, star, I whisper. Good, he replies. In my mind, I can see the smirk on his handsome face. You won't be seeing tonight, Tess. At least, not until our guest leaves. My free hand involuntarily covers my breasts at this confirmation that he isn't alone. I squeeze my thighs tightly together in an attempt to subdue the ache in my cunt. Nothing escapes his notice. He pulls my arm away, and with a click of metal sliding home, I'm utterly helpless. Excites you, doesn't it, my beautiful little bitch? Being so helpless, knowing we can do what we will with you. Oh God, we, yes. His breath is hot on my neck. It is his breath. Is it his breath, I suddenly wonder, as I feel him lock the other set of cuffs to the chair? I'm giving you what you want tonight, Tess. I'll be buried deep in your ass and another cock will be in that tight, hot, hot cunt of yours. Of course, it will be my way, my rules. You'll never know who it is touching you, whose cock you're gagging on. Does that suit you? I nod my head, my throat feels too dry to answer. Suddenly warmth spreads through my face as his hand connects hard with my cheek. Answer me, bitch. Dar, please, please, just tell me, I start beginning to panic at the thought that he might have invited a stranger. It disturbs me so much that I use his full name to get his attention. I've always imagined this scene happening natural. The result of an evening of comfortable companionship among friends and maybe a bit too much alcohol. He reads my mind. He always does. How he does it, I'll never know. I wish I could look into his eyes and see his thoughts with a modicum of the success he has at deciphering mine. As he leans into me, I picture him bending his long muscular frame over the back of the, of the chair as his rough cheek is pressed to my smooth, heated face. Do you think I'd allow a stranger to touch you, Pat? Tisk. Now be a good girl. No more questions. Have a seat, he says to the hushed presence. Glasses clink as I picture them sitting there. Are they looking at me, appraising me? Are they ignoring me, content to sit their whiskey in silence? Time loses meaning, and I begin to fidget in my seat. It might have been five minutes or 20 when I feel the chair being pushed back away from the table and strong hands roughly pull my breasts from my bra. I gasp and our quiets me. Warm liquid spills from my shoulders over my breasts, down my belly and pulls on the aluminum seat, mingling with the slick fluid that coats my sex and thighs. My senses are overwhelmed by the intense smoky aroma when a tongue starts to lick my neck slowly so damn slowly, making its way down the gentle slope of my breast. My nipple is sucked into a hot mouth. Whose, I wonder. Then it doesn't matter, as I feel the heat of another tongue following the same erotic path on the other side. My head rolls back as I revel in this decadent sensation. Teeth bite into one nipple, pulling and stretching it, while the other mouth, mouth remains soft and supple on my breast. The conflicting sensations keep me even more on edge. I feel intoxicated as both tongues begin to move down my sides 
and lap up the liquid that has accumulated in the crease of my thighs. Teeth bite into the tender flesh of my inner thigh, the heat of a tongue pressed against the sheer scrap of fabric that barely covers my pussy, makes me push myself greedily against whoever's mouth it is. I realize I don't care. I just don't want it to stop. I lose the attention of one mouth as the handcuffs that restrain me are removed. I know the mouth that continues to press against my cunt isn't Dar's. Only Dar would have the keys. Oh God, oh God, I think. I'm too lost in these moments to worry about Dora's reaction. Whatever will be, will be, as long as I continue to surrender myself to Dora and the moment. I'm pulled up from my seat, my bra removed, panties slide down my thighs until they puddle at my ankles. Step out, Dora says. I do, and I'm naked in front of my lover and this mysterious male presence. Given a moment to think, I wonder who this could be. I don't wonder long. I'm pushed back onto the corner of the bed, placed so that my cunt is available at one edge and my head hangs off the opposite side. A cock is at my lips and I open eagerly to take it in. 